the athletic director here at Concord University. I'd like to welcome everybody this afternoon. I'd like to extend a uh, special welcome to the Sig Talls in the back there. I know you guys appreciate you guys coming out. I know Eric appreciate that. And, and a special welcome to our, our special guest, Eric Hill. A, uh, has, a, has a special story. If you just ask the people who built it, or the athletes that have used it, or those who hope to use that building in the future. If you were to talk to many athletes that have went through the hallways here and used this locker room and come up these stairs, you would you'd hear thousands of different stories about the good times they shared, not only on the field, but within that locker room. And a locker room is a very special place for an athlete. Facilities, as you know, on, in this day and time are very important to the athletic world. They're going to make, make the difference between getting a recruit and maybe not getting that recruit. And we were, when we decided that, that we were going to try to update, upgrade our, our athletic uh, locker room, it was visioned from our, our former athletic director, Dr. Aloya and Eric Kilman that saw what this locker room could turn into and what it's going to be. And this is going to be, this is going to put us on a path down the road, not only to be successful within our own conference, but to be successful on a regional and a national level, and that's our goal. At this time, I would like to announce that, that uh, after we're done here, before we go on, I would like to make sure that everybody goes upstairs. We've got a reception. We'd like you to join us to, uh, for some uh, for some hot wings, which are especially of our uh, cafeteria, which are very good. Now, if Dr. Loy would come up and say a few words. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, and the episode on a few words. Uh, I will say that walking from the uh, my side of the campus, hearing that all the sick calls had moved over to this end of the campus, word was that the IQ dropped significantly in that end of campus. <laughs> Well, not only are we proud of the, uh, the SIG calls, we're also proud of Eric and your, your business partner, uh, Jeffrey Compton, and your contribution. Um, having been an athlete in my uh, college days and having been involved in college sports as both a coach and, and, and a faculty member on the faculty advisor, I can tell you that once a, a, an athlete meets the coach, once the athlete sees the academic potential of the university and they make the decision, that intangible component of how we make a commitment to our sport programs and the excellence we want to achieve, we find it in our facilities. And it's that, that aspect of it that makes the difference, that just gets that blue chipper that wants to come from here to there and makes a decision to come to Concord. And the efforts of the coach, um, the efforts of the academic community, that difference is found in our facilities. And it's supporters like uh, you know, the, 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 the SIGTAW alum today that represents not only the, the fraternity but the university very well. Eric and what you've done to help this move this to that level. You walk into that locker room and you're proud to be at Concord, you're proud to be a Mountain Lion, and it's just the beginning. Uh, we haven't calculated all the numbers, but part of your contribution and part of what we've been doing, uh, we've raised close to uh, $18 million in the last two years for infrastructure improvements, and this is the kind of the, the, the highlight of what we're trying to do. This is kind of the statement we want to make about our athletic facility. So thank you. Thank the Sig Cause for growing you and getting you the right uh, mountain lion culture. I'm really stroking you guys today, aren't I? I better be an honorary member by the end of the day. <laughs> but it's moments like this that take Concord to the very next level, and that's what we want to do. We want to take it to the national level. When people think of Concord, they think of excellence, not only just in academics, but excellence in athletics. So thank you again, Eric, for the proud part of the service. Thank you, Dr. Roy. And it's, 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 it's great to have a person like Dr. Roy in a leadership position with the vision that he has for athletics and sees, sees athletics as, as the front porch of the university. And that's, that's very important. Uh, our next speaker uh, is our head football coach. And I know he's, he's got a couple other things going on tonight, so we'll get him up here and have him, have him say a few words. I guarantee I'll be quick because uh, you guys know that I'm busy here a little bit. But first of all, I want to tell you why I'm dressed the way I am. I see everyone else is wearing coat and tie. I, I'm, a, I'm a tying kid from the heart of the state. I'm a little superstitious. You know? 
my nanny used to say it when I was little, she'd say, Mike, you're superstitious. And I'd say, no, I'm just, I like routine. So I got a certain way that I do things in pre game, and I don't want to change that. So, so just ignore the flip flops and understand that if we got and win, it won't be because we got good players or anything. It won't be because I want flip flops. <laughs> uh, first of all, when, when I interviewed on the job, you know, we went down the locker room, and the ceiling was probably about this tall, and you saw what it looked like. And the lockers were old, and probably back to when you guys played here, they were saying, not that you're old, but you know, the same lockers back in those days. And um, I remember telling Greg Quick, who was the athletic director at the time, I said, Greg, you know, we could get some players just because we're good football coaches. And I think we could get some players because we got money to offer. But eventually, if this program is where you want it to be, you're going to be recruiting players that have options. Have, they won't have just the option of Concord University, and they'll have other scholarship offers. And the difference between getting that kid, who's an excellent football player, and the average kid, is going to be your facilities. They're going to want to know what's the weight room look like that I'm going to be working out in the next four years. What's my locker room going to be like that I'm going to be living in the next four years? What are our facilities? You know, now that we got the, you know, we got the, the football field, the lights, and the turf, we got a top-notch locker room. Uh, you'll see the weight room. Some of the things that we've done in that. I'll put our facilities against anyone in the league. The previous school I just came from is probably the best football program in the eastern region, and I'll put our facilities as far as locker room and weight room up against them. And it's donors like yourself and people who think of Concord University and had a great time when they came here and they want to give back to this university, that's going to take us from where we're at to where we want to be. And I can't thank you enough. And you know, I hope you got more, there are more people out there like you that can help us even more in the future. And uh, I thank you, the team thanks you, and hopefully we'll go out there tonight and, uh, and show our appreciation on the football field. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Mike. Now it brings us to our, our, our special guest this evening. Eric Hillman was a football player in the early 80s. He was president of the AMA. He was a public defender of the SGA and a proud member of the Sick Talk. After he graduated, he went on to co-found a sports supplement company, which if I, correct me if I'm wrong, Eric, but I think you just opened your seventh location in Seattle, Washington, and celebrated this summer your 20th year in, in business. That's outstanding, and that's, that's I think, it's just, it's the legacy that, that Eric, that, that, he, that he has shown in leaving, not only to his fraternity, but to the athletes, not only football players, but the entire athletic department. Ladies and gentlemen, Eric Hill. I really appreciate this, and it was, um, you know, it was a long time coming. And we talk about one person that, that does things, and it's really not about one person. If you take a look at at our sports program when I was here in the late '70s and early '80s, we were the alpha males back then. I mean, if you take a look at at the the the, the person that was here, if the males that were here, we all binded together. I remember when I first came to Concord. I actually had to have, I was like that animal house guy, I actually had a special admittance to get into Concord because when I, I lived in Roanoke, Virginia, my grade point average was 1.4. And, um, and my best friend came to Concord, he played football here, and he says, Eric, man, you got to come. I said, man, I don't think I can, I don't think I could get in. So I drove up here, I went to Myrtle Beach, and I came back and I said, I'm going to try to get in Concord. I drove up here, and I, I want to say it was Kevin Sullivan was the admissions uh person here and I sat down and said, man, I will bust my tail. And he goes, Eric, we're going to put you on double secret probation. <laughs> he, he did. And he says, you have to maintain a C average your first semester or we're kicking you out. Well, you know, as I went on, most people don't realize, and if you look at my transcripts, my last year here at Concord, and I'm not really sure any student's ever done in the past, I took 27 hours my last two semesters here, each semester. Was it 27 hours in a year? I took 27 hours each semester my last year to graduate with my class so I could make sure that I would graduate on time and have a great grade point average. And, you know, that's pretty tough when you're, when you're uh, president of the AMA and I was vice president of the SGA and I was involved and everybody goes, Eric, where did you, you know, where did you get the drive from? And truthfully, where I learned a lot about business, truth was in the fraternity. I learned how to recruit. I learned how to manage money. I, hand, I learned how to talk to people. And I learned how to be fair in business. And they talk about fraternities, and they talk about the pluses and the minuses of fraternities. The fraternity and what Concord did for me was incredible. Concord gave a kid who had no option to even probably make it into any other school to make it. My nephew 
graduated Salem High School with a 1-6 average. I said, I said, Ted, let me try to get you in. His advisor said, do not go to college. You're not college material. We got him into Concord. Unfortunately, he didn't have to have a double secret thing like I did. And I really wasn't involved as much in the college when he came in, but they did, but Concord let him in. His high school advisor who told him not to go to college because he wasn't college material is now at the University of Oklahoma with a full ride and a doctorate in Indian Studies because he came to Concord. It wasn't because he didn't go to school, he didn't go to Virginia Western, which was very easy for him to come to. He came to Concord. Concord has built alpha males year after year after year. You're now building alpha females. You know, some of the female population that we see up here when we come up is incredibly powerful people. Concord, you know, for a guy who had a 1-4 average in high school, and I was definitely one of the ones who were passed through for, for sports. Uh, you know, for some reason I had, you know, very bad grades in chemistry, but that one chemistry teacher really saw that I needed to play football the next year, allowed me to pass chemistry. I hate that the system did that, but it was Concord who developed me and made me what I am today. And it's a, it's a successful business. And it was based off of what I learned here, not along the way. After I graduated from Concord, I went to Piedmont Airlines loading baggage. I started my own company after that, not based off what I learned at, Con uh, at Piedmont, but what I learned at Concord and what all the tools it gave me. Again, you know, I give back to what's always given back to me, and that's where my grassroots come from. And that's a college who took a chance on a kid who really should not have gone to college. And what Concord will do for SIGTAWs, for other fraternity and sorority members, if you understand that the power that Concord has to teach its students, you will make alpha males and alpha females ongoing forever. I appreciate what we've done. I appreciate Dave and Tony, you guys getting me back involved with this. Um, it, it's a strong support. Tony Mamone was a very strong person in helping build it. Sometimes it takes money, but it also takes the spirit of a guy to step in and get it done. One person does not build a building, it takes a full team. Concord's a great team. It's been incredible to me over all the years. And again, I appreciate you all coming out. Thanks again. We've got a uh, flag which we had put on the wall. Yes. Signifies their dedication to the university and to the athletic.